But we're starting out, if you have your Bible, Acts chapter 17, Acts 17 verses 1 through 4. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. And excuse me for those of you that are out there that are scholars that are like, you didn't pronounce this or that right. It's all right. All right. We're going to make it through. Um, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them and their three sa- for three Sabbaths reason with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded and a great multitude of devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. So this was the custom, if you don't know and you're just jumping in, the custom that Paul would do was he would arrive to a city and he would reason in the synagogues. He would preach from the Old Testament and show them in the scriptures that the Jesus, the Messiah you guys have been waiting for, he has come. You guys killed him and he raised from the dead and he's alive evermore and his spirit lives in his followers. So this is going to be, a lot of you are like, are you repeating yourself over and over every week? But this was the theme of the book of Acts as it's describing Paul's methods Paul would reason with religious people. Paul would debate and Paul would have to argue these things. And oftentimes the religious people would get hard hearted and they would kick Paul out. They would start a riot and they would persecute Paul. So this is what we're seeing in Acts 17 of Paul's custom arriving in cities, reasoning with them, talking about the promised Messiah. Now, many of the Jews and many Orthodox Jews today are still waiting for the promised Messiah. And Paul's going like, guys, he came. The Messiah came and he died. We, we, you crucified him and he's alive evermore, seated at the right hand of the Father. And so you're going to see some Jews, the Bible says in Acts 17, and some Greeks are convinced and decide to follow Paul and Silas and convert to Christianity. So this was a theme that was going on throughout and this is going to continue to happen as we go throughout the book of Acts. Acts 17, 5 through 9. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But they did not find them. They dragged Jason and some of the brethren to the rulers of the city crying out. Listen to what they said. This is what they cry out. Everybody listen. These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason harbored them and these are all acting contrary to the degrees of Caesar saying, There's another King Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. Now, it was making Jews extremely angry that Paul and Silas were preaching Christ crucified. And so this was a regular thing to cause a riot, to stir up a riot for several reasons. Reason one, distract them from hearing the message. This is a plan of the enemy. This is a strategy of the enemy to distract you from hearing the message of the gospel, to distract you from listening to New Testament preaching where there is real power that we are no longer living in the old covenant. Religion wants to bring us back to the old covenant. Religion wants to teach you that God doesn't speak, that God is dead, and that there's still distance between us and God. But this new covenant reality is the veil's been torn that the veil's been lifted, that God now is with us, in us, lives through us, and that we have communion with God, that we don't have to live this old covenant mindset any longer, that we don't have to live in the stale, dead, religion, religious Christianity any longer. And so the Jews were angry that Paul and Silas were preaching Christ crucified. And so they brought a riot upon to distract them. Don't let anything distract you from hearing the biblical preaching of the gospel. Don't let a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a job, a family member, don't let a career, nothing stop you from hearing the biblical preaching of the gospel. If somebody is preaching the gospel with power, if somebody is preaching Christ crucified, if somebody is preaching the gospel of repentance, the gospel of the kingdom, don't let you, don't get distracted by the things of this world. Don't get distracted by the culture and by the enemy and let the devil silence the voice of God, silence the voice of the preachers. But I'm telling you right now, there is a war going on over your attention. This is what the devil wants to do. Distract you from hearing the word. This is why you have six to eight hours a day on your screen time. This is why you can spend hours and hours and hours watching movies and Netflix and movies and doing all these things. And the moment you sit down to hear, like we're teaching tonight, the Bible, verse for verse, the gospel, there's all these distractions. All these things come up. 
all these things all of a sudden, and you've been fine all day long. And the moment you try to sit down and hear the gospel, the moment you read your Bible, the moment you begin to pray, the moment you begin to fast, you get flooded with all these distractions, all these things the devil wants to cause distractions, just like these religious people did. And, and still religious people are very alive and well today, and they want to distract you from the real move of God. Now, they needed the support of the world. It couldn't just be the religious people causing riots. So here's the way they got the world to support them in their rioting, saying that these men are preaching something contrary to Caesar, and that is that Jesus is king. So the fact they're preaching Jesus is king is threatening, and they're undermining Caesar being the king. And in reality, this was a fabrication, and they knew it. They just wanted to stir anger towards the disciples. Religious people today continue to create trivial issues to bring persecution among true disciples. Recently, we made a lot of cessationists mad, a lot of people in the reform camp mad, um, who teach a false doctrine that the gifts have seized. The, the teaching that the gifts have seized is a false doctrine. The Bible does not teach that theory, does not teach that doctrine. So in order for these cessationists to write us off, they posted a thing last week saying, they teach Christians can be demon possessed, which we don't. They teach word of faith, which we don't. They teach prosperity gospel, which we don't. Um, they try to claim to cast out demons. Now, the thing they did say was we claim to cast out demons. And my response is we don't claim to cast out demons. We actually do cast out demons. Demons are really cast out. And my question to a lot of these guys that the gifts aren't for today, deliverance isn't for today, where did the demons go? That's my question to all of you that don't believe deliverance is for today. Where did the demons go? If you don't think deliverance is for today and there was demons in the Bible, you agree, then where are all the demons? If you're not dealing with them and taking care of them, did they disappear now that the gifts have seized? So they create these trivial issues because they're mad about a doctrine that says God is alive, God is moving, and the gifts are for today. So this has been going on for centuries. And you can side with tradition, but I'm siding with the Bible. And the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. These are not the gifts of the apostles. These are the gifts of the Spirit. And there's nowhere in the Bible where it says God has taken them away. The only thing that has taken them away is your religious tradition. The only thing that's taken them away is religious people that to... to uh, substantiate their lack of zeal, passion, gifts of the Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to say about it, their lack of that, they have to create doctrines that say, God doesn't do this, or God doesn't do that, or you're not of God because of this, or Christ doesn't do this, or this isn't for today. These are all man-made doctrines. These are false doctrines, and they're not found or rooted in the Word of God. And that is why there will never be a debate you ever find where somebody can rightfully say the gifts have seized based on a specific verse. They have to take a culmination of verses out of their original context, out of what they actually mean, and they have to fabricate and make up many man-made doctrines. I'm not scared to say it. I'm not ashamed to say it. These are man-made doctrines and they go against what the Word of God teaches. The Word of God teaches that God is alive and active and the New Testament church walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is for now. This is for today. Don't let the devil lie to you. Now, one of my favorite verses is Acts 17, 6. These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. They are saying these men go against religious traditions. They go against worldly values. Now the world is already upside down. Christianity turns it right side up. The world is crooked. We're turning it right side up. The world is full of upside down theories and pollution and perversion. Issues like sex and marriage and culture and identity and love and joy and peace and happiness. These are all perverted in our culture. They are upside down. And what Christianity does is it turns them right side up. The world says, if you want to be first, you have to scratch your way to the top. The kingdom says, if you want to be first, you have to be last. The world says, if you want the best seat, you have to earn that spot. The kingdom says, if you want the best seat, you got to choose the worst seat. The world says, if you want to be successful, have everybody else serve you. The kingdom says, if you want to be great, serve others. The world says, to get clean, just work harder, do better, try better. The kingdom says, if you want to get clean, cover yourself in the blood of Jesus. The world says, if you want to be powerful, be known, be popular among people. The kingdom says that those who the world will never know that live in secret are the most powerful ones in the body of Christ. And we turn the world upside down when we take a biblical stand and preach Christ crucified. Death to self is the opposite 
of what the culture teaches. Christians are troublemakers to the demons that run our culture. The culture teaches, oh, only look out for you. The kingdom teaches, lay down your life for others. So this idea of chasing the carrot and scratching, clawing my way up to the top of corporate America is an anti-gospel, anti-kingdom message. This is a gospel that Jesus did not teach and Jesus did not preach. There's nothing wrong. Praise the Lord if you're successful. Praise the Lord if you have money. Praise the Lord if you're this or that. But that's not the end goal. The end goal is to make disciples. It's not getting a bunch of income. It's having a powerful outcome. So don't get it twisted. Is God against nice stuff? Is God against you being successful? Of course not. God desires you to be successful, but not at the sacrifice of not reaching souls for the gospel. Our number one priority is reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, is preaching the gospel, and is seeing the kingdom of God demonstrated on the earth even now. The kingdom of God is active. The kingdom of God is now. It's not for yesterday. It's not for tomorrow. It is right now. God desires to move even now. And so if you want to gain your life, you must lose your life. If you want to be great, you must be the least. If you want the best seat in the house, you gotta take the worst seat. This is about you dying to self. And this is where true joy, come on, am I preaching the gospel? There's true life and true passion and true joy. When you let go of your agenda, when you say, God, I keep breaking everything. Lord, I need your spirit. I need your plan. Nothing else in my life matters. In fact, I will go as far to say this because Paul said it, your life is worthless outside of fulfilling the, the call that God has in your life. If you wonder why you have this sense of worthlessness, if you wonder why you feel like you're aiming in the dark, trying to hit a small target and you can never find your way, it's because outside of doing what God has designed you and created you to do, you will be empty, friend. You can look in drugs, you can look in drinking, you can look in sex, you can look in this and that, None of it is going to fill the intrinsic void that you have on the inside of you. And only a fool says in his heart, there is no God. Friend, I'm telling you, the search is over. When you find God and, and testify in the chat here, everything else out, outside of God has such little value in comparison. It's like this man, the Bible says, he finds this pearl of great price and he goes and sells all of his possessions. And people are going, dude, why are you getting rid of everything? because he knows he found something better than everything and he's it's worth selling everything for to get this treasure that's hidden in the field to get this pearl of great price so this is turning the world upside down the gospel that we preach is anti-culture it's anti satan's kingdom it's anti what the world teaches you the college teaches you the high school teaches you the junior high teaches you and it's a gospel that turns things upside down and it threatens demonic systems it threatens religious tradition and it makes people mad woe unto you jesus said when everyone speaks well about you if you're offending people with the gospel welcome to christianity act 17 10 through 12 then the brethren immediately sent paul and silas by night away to berea when they arrived they went to the synagogue of the jews here we go again they arrive at berea and they go to the synagogue of the jews these were fair-minded than those in thessalonica these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these, these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. Okay, so here we have Paul and Silas. They get out of Thessalonica. They end up in Berea. And this was a breath of fresh air because they received the word with gladness because they did their homework. The Bereans checked the Old Testament scripture to see if what Paul and Silas were saying was biblical. And this is what we should do today. Everything I say, everything your favorite teacher or preacher says, check the word of God to make sure that what we're saying is harmonious with scripture. Make sure that what I'm preaching goes in harmony with what the word of God teaches. Now, if someone is saying something contrary to what scripture teaches, you should avoid that teaching on that specific topic. I wouldn't just say, oh, they taught one thing that wasn't right, then I'm going to throw them out. They're now a false teacher because here's the deal. Nobody's perfect. I hate to tell you, but every single teacher, preacher, podcaster, influencer that's Christian that you listen to, not one of them have ever everything proper, everything right, and everything correct. Nobody has it all clear and all right. Now, if somebody's teaching something contrary to the word of God, you should avoid that teaching. If they make that a pattern, then avoid the teacher. So if they have a wrong teaching, avoid the teaching. If they continue to produce wrong teachings, 
then you avoid the teacher altogether. The point is, be a Berean and check the Bible for yourself. I tell people this when we teach deliverance, check the Bible. Did Jesus cast out demons? Did the disciples cast out demons? Did Jesus ever talk to a demon? Did a demon ever say its name? Are these things biblical? You tell me. I've done hours and hours. You know, we have over 60 hours of teaching on it. You tell me. You open your Bible and you learn for yourself and you match is what they're saying scriptural. So you have to remember the Bible is not exhaustive. It doesn't have every single detail of every single element. But if someone's teaching something that's contrary, there's an issue. So do your homework. Don't blindly follow someone. A lot of you will blindly follow people that treat, teach traditions, traditional Christianity that says, oh, just pray a prayer, invite Jesus in your heart. That's nowhere in the Bible. You'll blindly follow people that say, the gifts are not for today. That's nowhere in the Bible. You'll blindly follow people that say, once you're saved, you're always saved. That's nowhere in the Bible. These things are not biblical realities. They are man-made doctrines. So look at the Bible and say, okay, is there any verse in all of scripture that says, once I'm saved, I could never walk away from God? That's If I don't see it, then that is a false teaching. Again, we don't need to write them off completely and say, oh, you're a false teacher, but that is a false teaching or a false doctrine. If somebody says, the gifts are no longer active. Find the verse that says the gifts died. Find it, because if they're not active, they died. And how did the gifts of the Holy Spirit die? Do gifts die? Where's that? Okay, that's on the Bible. We shouldn't cast out demons. Okay, let me go to the scripture and find the verse that says we shouldn't cast out demons. These verses aren't there. So we read that and go, okay, these are not in scripture. I'm not going to follow these because I've read the Bible. I did my homework. Now, if I say Jesus cast out demons in the synagogue, you need to open your Bible and say, okay, Mark 1 39, Jesus went from synagogue to synagogue casting out demons. When we teach these principles or these things, we need to look at the scripture. We need to read the scripture and say, does this, is this in the scripture? We did a video on tithing. I won't bring it up because I know it made a lot of you upset. And the teaching, the idea of the video was, is it, it, are we commanded in the New Testament? It wasn't, are we commanded in the Bible? Of course we're commanded in the Old Testament. But people didn't listen to what I said and they said, oh brother, no, it was commanded in the Old Testament. The question was, was it commanded in the New Testament? I mean, the answer is there's not one verse where Jesus commands New Testament disciples in the book of Acts to tithe. That was the whole point of it. Tithing is not wrong. Again, I said I tithe. I said you, I encourage you guys to give more than 10%, but when people hear, they don't go to the Bible for themselves. So we have to go to the Bible for ourselves and say, is fasting for today? Why didn't the disciples fast? But why are we required to fast? Maybe I should look into this. Is keeping the Sabbath in the New Testament? Did the disciples keep a Sabbath? These are things we need to go to God for. Don't just take a teacher. When I teach, everything I say, you should be going and being a good Berean. The Bereans looked at the word of God and said, did what Paul and Silas were preaching lining up, line up with the scripture? Acts 17, 13 through 14. But when the Jews from Thessalonica heard that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came and stirred up the crowds. Then immediately the brethren sent Paul away and to go to the sea, but both Silas and Timothy remained there. So 50 miles away, they're in Thessalonica. Remember, Paul and Silas and Timothy, these guys, Luke, they've just left Thessalonica, 50 mile journey to Berea. Now the guys will go 50 mile journey to come and start another riot. This absolutely blows my mind. Can somebody say something in chat here? The lengths that religious people will go to to try to hinder the move of God. Can I get an amen in the chat? These are people, I look at their channels, they create hundreds of videos to speak against miracles and deliverance and the gifts of the spirit, all to further their religious doctrine. Now, Paul ends up leaving because these guys are just following Paul, starting riots, saying he's a false teacher. They were saying this about Paul. They were making videos if they lived in 2022, saying Paul's a false teacher. Now, of course, there's no videos back then. People were going to take that out of context and say, Isaiah said they were making videos in the Bible. But if this was today, the Apostle Paul, false teacher alert. This guy's preaching this, this stirring up riots. These guys go 50 miles because they heard Paul and Silas are, are in Berea and us Religious people, we got to go do something to stop these guys. You know, we are God's gift to the church to stop anything that has to do with the move of God. And so we're going to stir up the crowds. Timothy and Silas stay and Paul ends up leaving. Acts 17, 15 through 16. So those who conducted Paul brought him to Athens and receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come with them with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, 
his spirit was provoked within him when he saw the city was given over to idols. That's Acts 17, 15 through 16. Now, historians say that Athens, there were more idols in Athens than of all of Greece combined. And Paul is overwhelmed. The Bible says his spirit is provoked because the entire city had been given over to idols. Athens being the religious center of Greece. Now, I want you to notice what Paul does next. And I wonder if some of us are vexed like this. I wonder if our spirit gets provoked when we look at our cities, whatever city you live in, and we go, man, these people are given over to idols. I look at the way they serve and the way they worship. And here's the reality. Every single one of you, there's 2,000 of you right here watching, every single one of us worship something whether it's a car a job a family member a person a career we all get excited about something we all worship something we all pray something we all give time affection glory adoration to something so don't say oh i don't worship this i don't worship that we all worship something and in this case the entire city of athens was given over to idols but watch what happens in the next verse Acts 17, 17 through 18. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him. And some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others says he others said he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. So here's what Paul does. Notice, he sees the entire city turned over to idols, and Paul goes directly to the synagogue, the modern-day church. Before he goes anywhere else, he puts responsibility on the church. We, as the church, need to take responsibility for the fact that our cities are given over to idols. Someone once said, the state of society is the report card of the church. Think about that. The state of society, the condition of humanity, is the report card of the church and we as the body of christ are failing to bring them healing deliverance the gospel the power of god reconciliation back to god we've been given the ministry of reconciliation and we are failing at that now some of you might say well I don't, we don't worship idols and the idols might not be golden calves or wooden rams but the idols now are entertainment music a boyfriend a girlfriend facebook instagram TikTok. Twitter, what would happen? I'm not saying this is a biblical reality, but it's possible you stand on judgment day before God and God says your idol was TikTok. Your idol was Facebook. Your idol was Twitter. Your idol was Netflix. I mean, imagine these idols, an idol that you spend more time on, more energy, more affection, more passion than we have with God. I mean, some of us are so passionate about the movies and the music and we can go hours and hours about our favorite actor. And I'm going like, how could we go longer talking about our favorite actor than we do talking about God? Some of you Christians have talked more these last week on Will Smith smacking uh, Chris Rock, is that his name? Than you do sharing about Christ. I mean, we go, we go long on these things. We get obsessed with the celebrities and the culture and the things of this world and we, we feed on these things and we go hours and hours and hours watching, 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 show after show after show. I get it, I get it. And we bow down in worship and then when it comes to God, we're like, I don't know if I have that much time for you, Lord. You know, it's like, I'm busy, God. Don't you see me down here? I'm struggling to try to make ends meet and pay the bills. And But I'm going like, then why did you have time for three hours on TikTok? Why did you have time for... Guys, this is not condemnation. This is a reality check to us as Christians to say, what am I worshiping? Have I been given over to idols? Have I worshiped the things of this world? Or is God the one that I worship? Is God have my full affection? Like when I get out of bed, what's the first thing on my mind? And, and you could pray tonight, Lord, change me. Lord, change me. I want to be, when I get out of bed, you're on my mind. When I go to bed, you're on my mind. I want to be, I want to know you, Lord, for real. I don't want to worship idols. Paul said, examine yourself. Examine yourself to see if Christ is among you. And he says, don't think you're better than you are because we all think like, I'm this, I'm this on fire Christian. And Paul's like, prove it. Examine yourself. Don't just think you're better. We have a tendency to think we're better than we really are. So Paul's reasoning with the synagogue. Now the idols, again, today might have changed appearance, but they're still idols. There was two groups there the Bible distinguishes that Paul encountered, and they were Epicureans and Stoics. The Epicureans were disciples of Epicurus. They believed pleasure and happiness is the chief end of life. Wow, that sounds like America. 
Pleasure and happiness, that's the goal of life. The most worthy pleasure is to be pain-free. Intellectual pleasure is superior to sensual pleasure. Matter is eternal. This is what the Epicureans, Epicureans believed. Existence ends when the body dies, so there's no resurrection, there's no afterlife, and the gods have no interest in human affairs. That was the first group. The second group were the Stoics. These were the disciples of Zeno. And they were pantheistic in their worldview and their life's goal is to be in harmony with nature, its laws and its passions. Duty to them was more important than love. Suicide was a recommended way of escaping from a life that can no longer be sustained with dignity. So this is what they taught and they preach. And here's Paul preaching. And these guys that taught that were saying, who's this babbler teaching about foreign gods? And they thought, well, Paul's promoting another God. And you know, there's gods everywhere. Athens is the Greek as a capital of gods and there's gods that whole cities worshiping idols So let's hear what this guy has to say Acts 17 19 through 23 and they took him and they brought him to a Rio Pegas saying May we know what this new doctrine is that you speak for you are bringing some strange things to our ears Therefore we want to know what these things mean for all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but to tell or hear something new. So these people in Athens, all they want is something new. Tell us something new. Give us a new doctrine. Some of us need to be careful about this, especially uh, us in the charismatic movement. Give us something new. We always want a new, fresh thing. We're waiting for to hear something new, something different. And then Paul stands up in the midst of Oreopagus and says, this is Paul's speech. Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an, uh, an inscription or an altar with an inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. So he's saying a couple things. Number one, you don't even know what you worship. You're worshiping gods that you have no personal relationship with. There's no personal relationship with the career that you're worshiping. There's no personal relationship with Netflix. Has Netflix ever delivered you? Has Netflix ever saved you? Has TikTok ever saved you? You're worshiping careers and cars and house and this and kids and jobs and all these things we worship and we don't have a personal relationship. These are unknown gods and we don't even realize we're worshiping them. They're just completely unknown. And also there's people right now in this chat who are atheists, Buddhist, Muslim, Catholic, Mormon, and you don't even know why. You just are. You've never seen miracles. Your religion doesn't raise the dead. It's never delivered you from depression, doesn't deliver you from drug addiction, doesn't bring you joy, doesn't fill the hole in your heart, and doesn't answer any of the questions that your soul cries out for, but you just worship you just are. You were raised that way. It was a tradition. Buddha has never talked to you. Muhammad has never spoke to you. Mary's never responded to your prayers. Joseph Smith has never brought healing. He's never brought relief to your broken heart. These are unknown gods that you don't know personally, but we serve a God that wants to know us personally. This is the only story ever told where the hero dies for the villain, where the end of the story, the hero lays down his life for his enemies. So friend, this is a real relationship, all this so that we can have a real connection to the God that we serve. I'm sorry to tell you, but Muhammad will never have a real connection with you. Joseph Smith will never have a real connection with you. Mary will never have a real connection with you. Buddha will never have a real connection with you, but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob really speaks, really does miracles. How do you know, Isaiah? Because John 10, the miracle signs and wonders validated that Jesus was the son of God and the father was in him. And if you saw Jesus, you've seen the father, he's alive and he's active. So he's saying, you don't even know these gods you worship. He was also saying, you have a God there just in case. Think about this, okay? Wrap your mind around this. They had thousands of gods they were worshiping. Just get the picture here. Thousands of gods they were worshiping. And then just in case they missed a God, they built an altar and they wrote on the altar to the unknown God. Just in case God is real, we're going to build this altar to the unknown God. Just in case this whole thing doesn't work out. And this is why people go to church on Sunday that don't serve Jesus throughout the week. Just in case God is real, I'm going to go to church on Sunday in case he's real. I don't want to go to hell. So I'll go to church on Sunday. I won't live for God. I won't talk to God. I won't have a relationship with God. 
just in case. This is the unknown God, the unknown God they worship. Um, this is why people that are atheists will once in a while say, oh, we'll pray. I'll pray for you or pray for me or send prayers or send this because just in case God's real. This is why when you're about to die, you scream out or you cry, oh my God, or God, or this, just in case. This is why people go to church on Easter once a year. Why would I go to church once a year? Just in case God is real. There's people that don't even believe in God that wear cross necklaces. And you could ask him, why are you wearing a cross necklace? Oh, just in case God's real. I mean, there's gang members that will be like, don't say anything bad about Jesus just in case he's real. All these people, and this is what he was saying to the people in Athens, you are religious in all these ways, but there's no real relationship. You serve God just in case. Let me say this, the God that I'm serving, my relationship with God is not just in case. I'm not serving him just in case uh, hell's real, just in case heaven's real. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God saved me healed me and delivered me and spoke to me and said, Isaiah, I have a plan for you and that he is the only way to the Father and that nobody comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. I'm not rolling a dice. I'm not gambling on it. I'm not saying if God's real, just in case, I'll put another statue. I'm telling you right now, God is alive and God is real. And Paul was saying this unknown God, this creator God that you might not know about, he says right now, tonight, Today, men of Athens, I'm proclaiming to you the God that you said just in case your entire life is the God that I'm preaching about. This is creator God. Acts 17, 24 through 34. Paul's going to describe the unknown God. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temple made with hands. Remember, this is in Athens, this religious uh, idols everywhere, temples to every God you can imagine. Verse 25 of Acts 17 nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives life to all breath and all things and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings verse 27 so that they should seek the lord in the hope that they may grope for him and find him though he's not far off from each of us for in him we live and move and have our being and also some of your own poets who said for we are also of his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, okay? Something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, verse 31, because he's appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man who he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead, verse 32. And when they had heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed among Dionysus, the um, area of Pagai, and a woman named Damari, Damaris, and others with them. So Paul says, listen, I'm going to introduce you to the God, the nameless God, the unknown God that you're worshiping. This is the God that overlooked ignorance for a time, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Who needs to repent? All men everywhere. Because our God does not dwell in temples. He's not dwelling in a temple made by hands, but he's living inside of people. He's the creator God. He's a God that has cre created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says he's not afar off any longer, but God desires to dwell in us. And the Bible says some of them believe, some of them followed Paul while others mocked. There's different, different responses to the gospel. In one way, you have people hearing the word and they respond like some of you might respond tonight. We want to serve that God. We want to know that God, Isaiah, pray for me tonight so that I can encounter this God. Pray for me tonight so that I can be healed, so that I can be delivered, so that I can be made new, so that I can repent of my sin tonight. And then others tonight in the chat, those listening right now on the replay, on the audio or on the video or throughout the week are going to laugh at this. They're going to mock this. They're going to hear us talk about the miracle power of God, the gifts of the spirit, deliverance, power, all the things that God does. And they're going to laugh. Those that are atheists, those that are Muslim, those that are Buddhists are going to laugh at us and they're not going to respond. They're going to mock us like these men did. Remember, not every single person you preach the gospel to is going to respond going, this is the greatest message ever. 
But your job is to plant the seed. Your job is to sow that seed. And it's God that does the watering. So trust me, not everybody is going to respond to the gospel. And as Paul will continue to, to see, there's going to be persecution and people coming against him. So let's chapter recap. I'm going to do this on every chapter now because you guys said last week you uh, appreciate when I do this. Acts 17. Paul's group preached in Thessalonica. Jews and God-fearing Greeks, including prominent women, were persuaded that Jesus was the Messiah, while the jealous synagogue leaders accused them of being troublemakers. They went, then went to Berea. The Bereans received the message about Jesus after carefully studying Old Testament scripture to see if it lined up with what Paul and Silas were preaching. But those from Thessalonica found out about it and stirred up trouble, so then Paul went to Athens. So Paul goes from Thessalonica to Berea, to Athens. In Athens, Paul saw idols. His spirit was troubled. He went and reasoned in the synagogue during the Sabbath and during the week with anybody that would hear him. He reasoned in the marketplace, also with the pagan philosophers. Speaking to these men, Paul revealed the identity of the unknown God whose altar that he found there, okay? When Paul told them about the resurrection of Jesus, some joked about it, others wanted to hear more, and then some also followed and put their faith in Jesus. That's Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 18, this will not be as long. I know we're about almost an hour in. Acts 18 verses 1 through 2. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. So here we have Aquila and Priscilla. Because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome, they came to them. It was clear from this, just the beginning, you're going to see Paul being alone at times, which he is here. Paul did not like working alone. Paul liked working in teams. He liked teamwork. And we know Christ sent them out two by two. And there's several principles in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs that reveal it's better to work together than to work alone. Remember, Silas and Timothy right now are still in Berea to help them. Acts 17, 15. Uh, Timothy and Silas are in Berea. Paul's by himself, and now Paul is going to meet these two people. We know that Corinth had a significant Jewish colony following Paul's usual pattern. He's going to go to the synagogue there, and in there, while he's doing that, he meets these newly arrived Christian couple named Aquila and Priscilla, and they become three close friends. But I want you to see what happened in Acts 18 3 because I want to draw an important point here. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked for by occupation they were tent makers. Okay. One thing that linked them all together was a common trade of what the Bible calls tent making. And the actual translation was leather workers. They made leather tents from goat skin and the goat fleece. Um, and they made all these different things made out of leather, which were used to make clothing and to make tents. So Paul at times accepted gifts financially so that he can do full time ministry. And he taught that ministers had a right to be supported financially by those that they were serving. We know this. We've taught on this before. Paul said, if I'm sowing into you guys spiritually, I should be reaping a physical benefit to support myself. Um, but Paul was here in Corinth and Paul worked at making tents. And let me make something very clear. There's nothing wrong with working a regular job and doing ministry. You are not less than if you have a regular job because even Paul, while working in ministry, had a job as a tent maker for a year and a half working a regular job while doing ministry. I'm sorry, for me, a year and a half of after getting saved, I worked a regular job while doing ministry. I worked at Starbucks and I was like, Lord, deliver me, Lord, deliver me. And I wanted to quit. And the Lord kept saying, not yet, not yet, not yet. And then one day, finally, the Lord said, Isaiah, you can now leave after a year and a half of doing full-time ministry and working at Starbucks full-time. And I was able to finally leave that and go full-time. But there are plenty of amazing pastors and leaders that work full-time jobs and are also in the ministry of full-time. Paul made it clear. I can give you 10 verses that Paul makes it clear. We don't preach for profit. Preaching for profit is not the goal. We don't get saved and say, which I don't think anybody really does. Uh, I want to be a preacher so that I can make a bunch of money. Because truth be told, most any job that you go get is going to pay you more than being a preacher. That's not the goal of being a preacher. The goal of being a preacher is reaching people with the gospel. So my pastor and uncle has always told me, when you're, if you're in ministry, you never chase money. The money will chase the ministry. So in other words, 
You don't follow after money. The money will follow after you. When it's God's vision, it's God's provision where, provision where God guides, God provides. And so we don't have to ever worry. And I told you guys before, 11 plus years now, never being on a set salary, never being on a set staff. And God has provided for us over 11 years. He's never left us without. Again, there's times where it's been up and it's been down, but God has never left us without in 11 years. God provides for his people. And so this was Paul working. So I want to take the pressure off of some of you leaders and pastors that say, oh, you know, I'm second class because I have to work a regular job. No, you're not. Even the apostle Paul worked a second or worked a job while doing ministry. And go look at all the times Paul talked about giving. It's very interesting. In one place, he said, I robbed one church, literally said I robbed them. I took extra money from them so I can come to you guys for free because I know you didn't have the money. So Paul was doing this where he'd go take extra money from one church to be able to travel to a church that couldn't afford it to be able to preach for free. And then Paul would say, I didn't even ask you for anything when I came. And now you're mad when I ask for something. And anyways, go read all the stuff when Paul talks about giving. It's interesting. Acts 18, four through six. And he reasoned the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, listen to this, he shook his garments and said to them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from now on, I will go to the Gentiles. It was here in Acts 18, four through six, where Paul decided I'm done dealing with these religious people. They keep persecuting me and going after me and everywhere I go, they reject me. And Paul decides enough is enough. These religious people, they don't want to hear the message. I'm focusing on the Gentiles. Paul shaking his clothing was a dramatization that the Jewish con Jewish congregation understood as him announcing, I'm separating from you and I'm warning you of judgment. A strict Jew returning from Israel from a pagan land would shake the dust off his clothing um, and as a sign of separation from a pagan nation. In other words, like if I'm shaking the dust off, I'm wiping off the pagan contamination from coming into Israel. So be before I come into Israel, I'm going to dust myself off. I'm going to dust my shoes off. This is why Jesus said, dust yourself off. If they reject you, dust yourself off because the Jewish people knew what it meant to dust yourself off. So Paul in essence was saying, You've made your bed, now go lie in it. That's what Paul was saying. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you all a stern warning. Be careful how many times you reject the gospel. There may be a time where God stops sending people to you. Because it was at this point in Acts 18 where Paul said, enough is enough. I'm tired of you guys rejecting the word. I'm dusting myself off. And guess what? Your blood is no longer on my hands. I've already given you the word. I've already shared it with you. I'm dusting myself off. The blood is no longer on my hands. Acts 18 seven through eight. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshiped God, whose house, listen to this, was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. So when one door closed, he gets kicked out of the synagogue, another door opens. Literally and ironically, the house next door to the synagogue was the house of a Gentile, a wealthy Gentile, who says, look, if they reject you there, Paul, you can come preach to us. We'll let you come preach. And Paul's welcome into a Gentile home. And this is what happens. The ruler of that synagogue shows up. The synagogue Paul left, dusted himself off. That synagogue leader showed up to Justice's house. And the Bible says he heard Paul preaching. He believed and his whole house was baptized. And this, I'm only guessing, would have sent a shockwave through the Jewish community that this Jewish leader now just got saved at Justice's house, a house, a wealthy man who was hosting Paul. So don't be dismayed if somebody doesn't want to hear the gospel. Dust yourself off. When one door closes, God says another door is going to open. So that house, Justice's house, was next door to the synagogue. Paul gets kicked out of one and goes into the other, and a, a great move of God begins to happen there. Acts 18, 9 through 11. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision, saying, okay, so notice what the Bible says. The Lord speaks to Paul at night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak. And do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one will attack you or hurt you, for I have many people in this city. And, he's, and he continued there for a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. So Acts 18, 9 through 11, God comes to Paul in a vision at night and says, Paul, no one's going to hurt you. And Paul ends up staying for a year and six months. 
Remember, Paul had faced opposition in every city. Mob violence, Paul was stoned, he was beat, he was imprisoned, he was sick, he was threatened, he was ridiculed, he was rejected, he was hated, he was verbally abused, he had personal abuse, and Paul is discouraged, I'm guessing. I mean, who wouldn't be? And Paul is not knowing, should I leave? Because oftentimes Paul would leave to the next place. And all of a sudden, a vision of the night, God gives him three reasons. This is three reasons for you why you shouldn't stop preaching to your friends and your family and those people at work. Reason number one, the Lord says, I am with you, Paul. That's the reason. I am with you. I, th I think we don't, we undervalue the fact that when we're preaching and ministering to people, that God is with us. When we're doing deliverance, God is with you. When you're laying hands on the sick, God is with you. God himself is with you when you're ministering. So reason one, God is with you. Reason two, no one will attack you or hurt you. God has promised divine protection. That's like Mark 16, you'll drink poison, you'll not. It's not saying go get a bottle of poison and drink the poison. It's saying that if somebody poisons you, which was not abnormal, then you're gonna drink the poison that they poisoned you with in your drink, trying to kill you, and you're not gonna die because I'm giving you divine protection. But again, people take that and say, oh, if you drink, go drink poison, then if you really think God can cast out demons, that's not what the Bible was saying. And then thirdly, the Lord has people in the city. The Lord says, I have people in the city, so I'm gonna be with you, I'm gonna protect you, and I got people around that are gonna help you out. So Paul stays a year and a half teaching anyone that would listen. One of the greatest churches in the New Testament would emerge from Corinth. Paul would later write to them in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. If you don't know, 1 and 2 Corinthians was written to this church that Paul started. But 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, exhortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the spirit of our God. He says, as such were some of you. This is what the people in Corinth, he's preaching, they came out of this, and Paul is reminding of what God has done in their life. This is, this is the beauty of the gospel, that God will take those who are idolaters, fornicators, thieves, drunkards, drug addicts, exhortioners, liars, revilers, completely change them by the power of the Holy Spirit and use them for his purposes. Paul says you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified by the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Yes, you were all those things, but you are now made new by the power of God. You're not right-ish, you're righteous. You're justified, which I like to say means just if I'd never sinned before. Friend, you've been given a fresh start. Somebody needs to be excited about this in the chat. You're a new creature. There's something to tell others about. This is a God worthy of giving everything to that takes our brokenness. I mean, just take a second and think about the hell that God brought you out of and look at you tonight in a Christian broadcast hearing the gospel message. Would have never done this years ago, but God in his sovereignty and his mercy and his power, Paul said, you were this, but look at you now. You're justified, just if I'd never sinned. Righteous, not right-ish, righteous. Standing before God boldly now. Acts 18, 12 through 17. When Galileo was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, this fellow, man, I feel like tonight we've repeated ourselves over and over, but this is what's happening in Acts here. This fellow persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. Uh, verse 14, when Paul was about to open his mouth, Galileo said to the Jews, if it were a matter of wrongdoing or wicked crimes, O Jews, there'd be a reason why I should bear with you. But if it's a question of words and names of your own law, Look at it yourselves, for I don't want to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them from the judgment seat. Verse 17, then the Greeks took Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. But Galileo took no, Galileo took no notice of these things. So God says, I'm going to protect you. And God uses this man, Galileo, Galileo as the one that would bring protection to Paul. They basically are trying to persecute Paul. And the judge is like, look, I don't care. This isn't a crime. You're, he's not doing anything wrong. You guys deal with it your own way. Stop bringing it to me. Acts 18, 18. So Paul remained a good while. Then he took, took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria. And Priscilla and Aquila were with them. He had his hair cut off at uh, Cent Centria. I don't know how to say that. Centria, for he had taken a vow. Okay. And everybody looks at this and says, why would Paul shave his head? 
Shaving your head, taking a vow was just demonstrating publicly your gratitude to God. So Paul, by shaving his head, was thanking God, was giving God gratitude for helping him, not only protecting him from Corinth, but also helping him grow this church and using him in Corinth for a year and a half. Getting a haircut was basically a Jewish way of saying thanks to God for um, all that you've done for me. Acts 18, we're almost done here and we're going to pray, okay? Acts 18, 19 through 28, this is long, but it's descriptive and we're just going to read it. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Here we go again. When they asked him to stay longer with them, he did not consent, but he took leave of them saying, I must by all means um, keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, but I will return to you again, God willing. And he sailed for, from Ephesus. Verse 22 of chapter 18. And when he landed at Caesarea and gone up and greeted the church, he went down to Antioch. After he had spent some time there, he departed and went over to the region of Galatia and uh, Phrygia in order, strengthening of all the disciples. Okay. Verse 24 it changes the story. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in scripture, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. Verse 6, 26. So when he began speaking boldly in the synagogue, Aquila and Priscilla heard him, took him aside, and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he desired to cross to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had been believed through grace, for he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from Scripture that Jesus is the Christ. All right, so we saw... All uh, throughout those last, uh, those beginning verses, Paul's journey going from this place to this place, from Ephesus, went from Jerusalem to Ephesus, then he goes to Antioch, then he goes to Galatia, and Paul's going all over the place. And at the same time, there's this man who's boldly preaching and he's declaring Christ and declaring God, but he only knows the baptism of John. So Aquila and Priscilla, that's a tongue twister there, take him aside and say, hey man, we just want to explain to you God more accurately and as a result, this man's now vigorously, vigorously refuting the Jews, showing from scripture that Jesus is the Christ. I want to show two lessons here and then we're going to pray. Lesson one, if someone does not fully understand God, but is preaching passionately, we don't need to throw water on them. We need to encourage them, take them aside and teach them where they're in error. There's a lot of young people that get the fire of God and a pastor's like, you're not preaching right and throws water on their fire instead of taking them to the side discipling them and teaching them what they should be doing. That's what Aquila and Priscilla did. That's lesson one, okay? Do not throw water on people that are newly saved, that are passionate. They're not gonna have it all together. They're not gonna know all the right words, but we need to take them aside and we need to train them and teach them. Lesson number two, if you're the guy who thinks he knows everything, maybe you don't, okay? Apollos is preaching passionately with zeal. The Bible literally says he's he's vigorously preaching the gospel, preaching the word accurately, but he realizes, maybe I don't know it all. Maybe I'm not an expert at every topic. And so I'm going to allow them, I'm going to humble myself and let these other people come and they're going to teach me. So those are something we need to be very, very careful about. Be very careful thinking you know it all. Nobody knows it all. Nobody has all the right answers. We need to stay humble and we need to submit under authority and let people teach us and correct us if we don't know and we can learn better about the way. Chapter wrap up, and then we're going to pray. Paul teams up with Aquila and Priscilla. They were all tent makers in Corinth. Jews, um, some Jews, including the synagogue president and his family, embraced Jesus as their Messiah. But Paul faces opposition, making him go into justice's house and preach to the Gentile believers because he's kicked out of the synagogues. Paul feels a great sense of inadequacy ministering in Corinth and the Lord in a vision comes and says, I'll protect you. I'll be with you. There's many people in the city and Paul stays for a year and a half. Um, enemies accuse Paul before the Roman governor, Galileo, who ruled in favor of the Christians. As Paul left Corinth, Aquila and Priscilla demonstrate thankfulness to God with a vow. He left Aquila and Priscilla in Ephesus and went on to Jerusalem and Antioch. Last chapter wrap up when Apollos, an educated Alexandrian Jew and a student of John the Baptist arrived in Ephesus. Ephesus and taught in the synagogue, Priscilla and Aquila took him under their wing and filled the gap, filled in the gaps of his theology. And he went on to Europe and became a highly successful Christian apologist. Praise the Lord. That was an hour and 10 minutes here. 
Let us pray, and then we'll hang out with the chat, and we'll do all that stuff. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for what you're doing in this community, God, for what you're doing in this broadcast. And Father, I pray, as your word said tonight, God, that we would be those that turn the world upside down. I pray over every single person watching, Lord, that you would just release the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. I pray, Lord, that you would stir the gifts of God as we're reading and studying through the book of Acts. Father, we know that it's not just a historical document, but God, it is a living reality that your word says that is alive and active. And so, Father, I pray tonight, activate us. Those of you that have been in the stands, those of you that have been in the bench, on the sidelines, I pray tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost that God would activate you, that God would use you mightily in the ministry. Father, we want to be used of you. We want to know you, God. We want to experience you tonight, God. We repent, Lord, of our idol worship. Some of you are worshiping that unknown God. You're just, you're just because I go to church. I don't know why. There's no real relationship tonight, Lord. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that we would know why we worship and praise you, Lord. Tonight, God, we want to encounter your spirit. We want to encounter your power. God, we want to know you. We don't want to live our lives on the fringes of a dead religious system. But I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you begin to fill people. Those of you that are tired, weary, Going, Isaiah, I don't know if I'll survive another day or another week. I pray right now that you'd be refreshed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that God would renew you. I pray the strength of God. I pray the passion of God. I pray the zeal of God to come over you right now. More of you, Jesus, and less of me. Somebody needs to pray that right now. More of you, Jesus, and less of me. I need your Holy Spirit. Somebody needs to die to self right now. Lord, we die to self right now. We die to our own dreams, our own ambitions, our own desires. And Lord, we want to be made alive in you. We want your spirit to fill us. We want to let go of our life. Somebody needs to let go right now. Let go of your life and say, God, I'm clinging on to your promise. I'm tired of hanging on. Come on, you've been breaking your life. Everything you've been doing has been breaking. It's been not working. Let it go and cling on to the Christ, to the cross of Christ. Let the power of the Holy Spirit change you, invigorate you, empower you, and use you. Come out of that religious mindset, those religious scales, and these religious teachers you've been listening to, and let the Holy Spirit quicken you right now. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do tonight. Let us be like the Bereans that would study the scripture to show ourselves approved, that would not just believe Isaiah or a preacher, but would look to scripture to find is what I'm saying tonight true or not? Does God require all men ever to repent? Looking to the scripture and saying, Lord, I want to look to you. Give us discernment, God. Give us an appetite for your word. Deliver us, God. You said for us to pray to be delivered from evil. This is a daily bread prayer. So Lord, tonight, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from every unclean spirit that would try to attach itself to us, that would try to infiltrate our lives. And Lord, deliver us tonight in Jesus' name. Bring healing tonight, God, over those that are sick. We command your body be healed and restored in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. Be restored in Jesus' mighty name. Let the power of the Holy Ghost bring healing over your body right now. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Empower us by your Holy Spirit. Anoint us, God, tonight, Lord. Empower us tonight, God. Family members, friends, come on, pray for somebody tonight. Lord, healing and deliverance. We need you, God. We want to be bold for you, God. We want to honor you, Lord. We want to serve you, Lord. We're desperate, God, for you. We want to support what you're doing, Lord. Let us not be religious, God. Let us not argue. Let us not debate. Let us not be like these philosophers and these men in Athens that worship gods they don't know. Lord, we lay every idol. Come on, some of you need to say this tonight. We give you the idols, God, of TikTok, of Instagram, of social media, of Facebook, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, whatever your idol is, your job, your career, your children, your family. I don't know what your idol is. What are you worshiping? What are you praising? What, what is on the altar of your heart? What are you giving your affections to and your passion to? Lord, tonight we lay it down. We lay it down. We lay it down, God. We give it to you. We don't want to be idolaters. Lord, tonight we pray, God, that we would give it to you and we'd serve you with everything in us. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, release your power and release your anointing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Do what only you can do. Thank you, Lord. Lay down your idols tonight, guys. Lay down your idols tonight, guys. Whatever idols you have, lay them down. God is saying to you tonight, lay them down. This is no game. This is no joke. Your life is at stake. 
I don't want, listen, I don't want God to ever say, look, I'm dusting myself off. I don't want people to ever, hey, no more. God stopped sending messengers. All the messengers God sends, they just dust themselves off and say, we're not bringing you the gospel anymore because you never listen. Father, let us listen tonight in Jesus' name. Some of you need to repent. How do I repent? Turn from your ways. Tell God, Lord, I'm wrong. You're right. I let go of my life. I turn to you with everything in me. I want to follow you tonight. Some of you need to follow Christ tonight. I'm not going to lead you through a prayer to invite Jesus in your heart because I don't see that in scripture. But do what Peter said. Repent. Repent. Turn from your ways. Acknowledge your need for God and say, Lord, help me. I want to serve you. Someone said, I lay down mediocrity. Come on. Lay it down. Lay it down. I'll idol worship. No more idols. No more idols. We worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing among us tonight. Thank you, Lord, that you're the only God on the throne. You're the only God of, of our lives. We are not God. We are not our king. We are not the king of our lives, but you are the king of kings and Lord of lords. You are the only one that we worship and we adore and we give adoration to. Thank you, Lord. We want to follow you. Thank you, Lord. Awesome time tonight, guys. If you're new, we are going to go over those that have given already and thank them. And then we're going to hang out with the chat and talk. We have been live for an hour and 15 minutes here. We try to do these an hour. I know they're still long. I know there's still a lot of information. It's probably still too much information, but we're trying to get through the book of Acts. And so we have a lot of stuff to cover and we're mixing it up. Last week, we did the entire book of Revelation in one hour. Thank you, Daniel Adams. I appreciate you, bro. Everybody make sure to show Daniel Adams love. If you guys want to give tonight, you can. We always joke and say, don't dine in dash. Um, all of our content's free, as you know, so we are crowdfunded, meaning we are supported by our viewers. That's how we survive. That's how we're able to do what we do, is we are supported by our viewers. We have somebody that does our thumbnails, our video editing, all of a lot of our stuff I wouldn't be able to do or have time to do full time. We also have someone that does the deliverance map full time. We have a person doing the deliverance map. It's a daily thing, guys, to get back to emails, to post things on the deliverance map. Make sure if you need deliverance, you check out our map because there's literally almost 2,000 people doing deliverance all over the world, casting out demons. For those that say, man, I need deliverance. I need someone to pray the baptism of the Holy Spirit over me. I need to meet up with somebody. Check out our deliverance map on our website. All the information's there. We have a lot of stuff there that you can do and stuff. Ways to give. Those of you asking, you can give on the website. You can scan the QR code. Um, you can give on PayPal. You can give the PayPal link in the comments. That will pop up on screen. If you do the one in the comments, that's the one that pops up on screen and the message comes to me directly. You can do Zelle. You can do Venmo at Isaiah Saldivar. Again, this is not required. You don't have to do this. If you don't have the money, don't feel bad. Please don't apologize. None of that. It's not required. It's greatly appreciated to continue on what we're doing. Um, some of you can't afford it. Don't do it, okay? Still enjoy the content. And then also, I, I always like to talk to the naysayers as well. Those of you that say, oh man, you know, you're asking for money. Preachers should never ask for money. One, go study what Paul said about giving and then you'll come back after that and realize you're wrong. But number two, if you're one of those people that are like, oh, I hate when preachers ask for money, guess what? Don't give anything, okay? Hear the message, receive it with joy, receive the hundreds of hours we have of content and you don't have to give $1. You could just be angry about it. It's okay. Stay here though, please. Don't be angry and then never come back. Just be angry and, and get it for free. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't feel obligated to give it if you can't. Thank you guys. All right. Um, someone said I was at Walmart listening to Isaiah loud enough and this dude next to me said when I was paying was like, wow, I, li I like what you're listening to. Who is he? Praise the Lord fam. Yes, I got a lot of uh, stares, but that one needed to hear. Awesome. AJ on Discord said he was listening to this in uh, Walmart loud and a guy next to him said he liked it. Who is that? Cool. Thank you, AJ. I'm in the Discord general chat, by the way, guys. If you didn't know, um, I've been having Discord up this entire time. If you're not on Discord, the Discord is... Oh, no, wait, is that the wrong button? There it is. There's our Discord chat. It's going off here. Um, get on the Discord. We have chat rooms, deliverance rooms, prayer rooms. If you want to see the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's a bunch. There's literally the Discord's amazing. Shout out to all the guys that are just helping run the Discord and doing an amazing job, all the mods. Every time I jump on Discord, there's literally tons of people in here chatting in the voice rooms 24-7. It's an online community. For those of you that are like, what's Discord? It's an online community. I see you commissioned. I like your little emoji there, Isaiah. <laughs> Not emoji, I'm sorry, your little uh, gif there. That's awesome. All right, let me read these. Again, if you want to give, you can. They're on screen and they are in the chat there. I'm active on the Discord as much as I can be. I'm not in there 24 seven because I have four kids, a life and a lot going on, but I jump in whenever I can. I jump in and post the videos. I jump in and talk. Occasionally I'll jump on for about an hour or two at night and talk with you guys and it gets, it gets really cool. I'll be in the voice chat more as well. 
All right, tomorrow night, exposing the new age part two. Don't miss that. Let's start reading some of these donations. If you're new, hang out, kick back, grab a nice tea, grab a water. Let me grab my Costco water. Uh, no, I'm not sponsored by Costco, but Costco, if you're watching, shout out, provide me with some free water. All right, Victor. Uh, Collegio, Collegia said, thank you, brother, for all that you do. Thank you, Victor. Warren and Donna said, thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Warren and Donna. If you guys are wondering why I had a little bit of like a lisp and some words I had a, trouble pronouncing, I got braces on my bottom teeth. Uh, what was it, two weeks ago? I don't remember, but they're not fun. Let's just say that. So yeah, that is why I have a toaster oven in my bottom lip. And some of you are wondering why I'm talking weird, why my lip looks like this. It's because I have braces. I'm just trying to feel young again. So I have braces for fun. All right, Linda and Serafina said my daughter and i tune in to watch you every chance we get i've been watching you for a year now and it's been life-changing i'm truly grateful we will not dine in dash god bless linda and seraphina shout out to you guys i appreciate you guys thank you thank you thank you you guys are awesome linda and seraphina thank you thank you thank you francis d'amico uh d'amico said i got your prayer request there thank you so much man i will pray for you i got you if you have a prayer request i won't read it out loud thank you all right Christina and Esther said, thank you so much for your teaching and encouragement. You truly have been a blessing to us. God bless you richly and God give you strength. God bless your ministry and your family. Thank you, Christina and Esther. Pablo Felix said, God bless you, Isaiah. Grateful for finally being in the deliverance map and practicing deliverance through your teachings. Thank you, Pablo Felix. I'm glad you got on the map. I know you were saying that you were waiting like a month or something. We must have lost your email. If you apply for the deliverance map and you don't get a response in like a week or two, just send another application. Some of the emails get lost email servers are weird guys some emails just don't come through so just resend it if you've been waiting a long time because usually we get back to them really fast believe in jesus i continue to spread the gospel thank you believe in jesus kingdom freedom thank you so much for the generous donations that keep spreading the gospel brother come on jesus thank you thank you thank you so much kingdom freedom i appreciate you thank you anonymous said might not be much however i do have at least this to give so i'll gladly and gratefully sow into the kingdom with all that i have may god continue to bless you and family thank you anonymous i appreciate you thank you thank you thank you all right, Freddie and Priscilla, thank you guys. You guys are so faithful, always giving. You know, people, God brings in people for seasons that will give generously um, every single stream and, and just keep us going. And then they'll disappear. And then we don't know, you know, they're not here for a few months and other people come in and God uses them. And so if you're giving and sowing, I appreciate you guys allowing God to use you to sow and to keep us going. It is a revolving door with live streaming, right? Like it's not like because we had 2,000 tonight or 3,000 last week or 4,000, whenever that we're gonna have that every week. We have to, every time we go live, we have to build the audience back up. So it's not like just we get on and there's 5,000 people or however many were there laughing door. The algorithm has a lot to do with it, whether it shows people our content or not. So there's videos where you post and get 500,000 views and videos that you feel like were the same and just as good that get 20,000 views. There's a lot of the algorithm at play. So again, my point is these people that come in here and give like Freddie and Priscilla constantly, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. And it's awesome. I said, love the lesson tonight, brother. Encouraging word for all who continue to reach loved ones and coworkers. Keep it up. Praise report. Had an outdoor revival in parking lot in Phoenix, Arizona. The homeless were saved, baptized, healed, and delivered. Amazing, Freddie and Priscilla. Awesome. I hope I can see you in Arizona this weekend. If you go Sunday, come talk to me. Leonette said, love you, brother. Thank you for taking your time to teach us about Jesus. God bless you. Thank you, Leonette. And guys, Wednesday at one o'clock, I'll be on Remnant Radio. If every one of you, there's 1,600 watching right now. If all of you jump in there, support me on Remnant Radio. Get up in the chat and uh, support your boy. It means a lot, guys. I'm telling you, when I do interviews on other channels, which I don't do them often, or if I do events and you guys show up and that show of force, it does mean a lot because it's like our community. We're building this community and you guys representing and showing up, being in the chat, talking. It just really does help and I really appreciate it. It's just fun. So show up Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, Remnant Radio. I'll post a link whenever we're live and before. Daniel Adams said, always bringing that fuego. Love you, man. Thank you, Daniel Adams. I appreciate you. If you guys haven't checked out Daniel Adams, what are you doing with your life? Go check him out. Raid Soul, such a fire stream. Praise the Lord. Thanks for always bringing the fire. Every stream, love you, bro. God bless. Have you listened to Montel Fish? I have before in the past, Raid Soul. Thank you, man. I need to put wax on my braces, y'all. It is painful. I could feel them cutting. It's painful. Child of the one true God. That's a weird picture, but hello. <laughs> Oksana, thank you. Ray said, how you doing? I'm doing good, Ray. How are you? Thank you, man. Lucas, thank you. Erica John said, appreciate your teaching. Thank you, Erica. Bernie Castaneda, thank you so much. It really felt the power of God. Thank you for convicting us. Thank you, Brittany. Victor um, Kalagua, thank you. Can you give my wife a shout out? Brenda from uh, Lamata, California. Shout out to you, Brenda from Lamata. 
Victor's wife. Thank you, Victor and Brenda. Appreciate you guys. All right, I'll read Venmo after, Stephanie. Yes. Saved by grace. Said, hey, Pastor Isaiah, I'm so grateful for you and I'm excited to get into Acts. Can you please pray for me? I got you, saved by grace. Thank you. Sante and um, Angelo, say God bless you and everyone. Please pray that God would guide me. I got you. Will you ever rap with Z? I, if I ever rap, I will rap with Z, okay? But I don't know if I'll ever rap, so <laughs> thank you. Linda Linville, thank you so much. Jared Herrera. So thanks, Brother Isaiah, for these making videos. I'll never miss a live stream. I'll forever support you. Please don't stop making videos. You've helped me in so much. I can't even thank you enough. Please come to Colorado. Thank you, Jared Herrera. I appreciate you, bro. And I hope to get out to Colorado sometime soon. The audio is glitching. Oh, that's not cool. Why is it glitching? Let me see. Is it playing on my end? Sorry if it's glitching. I don't know why. Maybe refresh it. Katie, I got your prayer request there. Thank you so much said I, I thank god for you and your teachings bless you isaiah thank you katie all right let me read the venmo that was all the paypal thank you thank you thank you everybody you guys are awesome let's look up uh what are we doing guys venmo jessica morales thank you so much i appreciate you jessica morales thank you thank you thank you mm -mm -mm. okay here we go we're going to read the Venmo. Venmo is a really good platform. It's actually the only platform that has zero fees. So yeah, if you're giving on Venmo, it has zero fees. Let's go to the Venmo. Valerie Vigil said, preaching that fire. Alexandra Rojas, thank you. John Stafford said, God bless you and your family. Appreciate you so much. Thank you, John. Christine Vega, thank you so much. Rafael Rodriguez said, God bless you. Amazing message today. Glory to God. Let's keep fighting a good fight. Thank you, Rafael. Stephanie Norris um said thankful for you one question why do you hate bingo night <laughs> i don't hate bingo night it's just a good illustration when i'm talking about churches only having bingo night in that prayer but i don't hate bingo night i wouldn't mind going and hanging out at bingo night all right um if your church has bingo night praise god just make sure you have prayer as well i don't hate it though ashley um got uh gothier said listening while working in the hospital thank you and i got your prayer request there thank you so much ashley i appreciate you Lorianne Reese. Thank you, Lorianne. We love you, Lorianne Reese. So keep up the good work. I love your teaching dis uh, discipline and prayer goes to you and your family. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Lorianne. Thank you, thank you. Sherelle Turner. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sherelle. She said anonymous and I read it. I'm sorry. Well, um, Adebayo. Some ministry. Thank you, Adebayo. John, thank you so much. Said I refinanced the house and took a little extra out for you in your ministry. Thank you for sewing in all of us. God bless you. John Pacone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that donation. I really appreciate you, man. That's really major and we don't take it lightly. And again, couldn't do this without you guys. Thank you. Joshua Martinez. Said, God bless you. Thank you. Myra Almazan said, if you get delivered, but you live with unbelievers and they watch demonic movies and aren't living for God, can demons, demons enter inside of you? No. Demons can enter into you from someone else opening a door. It's just if you're opening the door and participating. Thank you. Lawrence Stevens said, defeating witchcraft YouTube, witchcraft. I just said witchcraft. I meant to say witchcraft YouTube video. God bless. Thank you, Lawrence. All right. Let me see. Mariella, Diane, thank you. So thanks for encouraging me. Okay, that's all the Venmo. Let's hang out with the chat here. Saria Alvarez, thank you. Said you're a blessing. Clarissa said the Holy Spirit moves my... Okay, let's see. Mm-mm-mm. Psalms 1834. Thank you, Clarissa. I don't know if you want me to read that out loud, so I won't. But thank you so much, Clarissa. I appreciate you. My throat. Every time I put the air conditioning on, my throat gets all dry and scratchy. But if not, I'm all sweaty. So what do you do? What could you do? Someone said, Spirit of Dr. Pepper. I don't know what that means. Is this the end of the stream? This is the part where we, yes, we are done preaching. We're done doing donations. Now we hang out with the chat. So it's not the end of the stream, but it's the end of the preaching portion. And now we hang out and reread the chat and we engage with you guys. This was a powerful message. Thank you, Kyle. I'm reading all the chat, guys. Um, Prophet James Thompson, I'll look him up. I'll look him up. I, I know, guys, I have a long list of names you guys are asking me to look up, and I only have so much time in the day. Anonymous said, Chuck E. Cheese, McDonald's, drive through Tickle Me, Elmo, Water Down, Kitty Pole, Bingo Night, Burger King, Christianity. Thank you, Anonymous. Watching all the way from the center of Mexico. Let's go, Gio. Welcome from the center of Mexico. A humidifier would help. I, You're right. I need to get a cold air humidifier, which I think I already have. I should put that on plus the AC and maybe it'll balance it out, right? This is the cool side of the stream. Yeah, this is where we hang out and chat and talk and I'm a normal person, okay? 
It is witchcraft. You're right, it is, but I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say witchcraft. Have you ever seen Todd White? Yes, I have. Change the light. Okay, what would you like? These were actually a new light setting I never used before, and I really liked it. It was changing colors, but not too fast. It was like, it was just right. Oh, wait, what's happening here? We're going to change it. What do you want me to do it? Like that? You want to do like a voice activated one that moves? What color? What way? You tell me. Green? We could do green for a bit. We'll do a little green for a bit there. Me and my wife, Laura, love listening to you. Thank you, Eric Irons. Why do you hate on Android's NPCs? I don't. I use PC. Um, it's a joke when I say if you have an Android, you need to get saved. It's just a joke. I say you must read 2,000 words a minute to keep up with the chat. I try to. I try to. Make a video for video games? I can, if you want me to. But I've said it before. I, the reason why I don't have a mo uh, video on movies, or maybe I'll make a, a video on like movies, video games, music all together, because it's about content, right? It's not about video games or movies. It's about what is the content, what are you watching, and stuff like that, right? So yeah, but I, but I can do that. Can you show some photos before you were saved? I only have very few because I never took pictures before I was saved because I was ashamed of everything. So I hated taking pictures, but I can find some. Isaiah, you're sweet to cater us. Thank you. What's the church in Mesa, Arizona called? Without Walls Church on my website. Did I not put it on my website? Did I not put the name of the church? Please tell me. I had to have, right? Someone tell me I did. Right, guys? Hello? Yeah, Without Walls Church in Mesa, Arizona. It's on my website. I was scared. Thanks for everything. You're welcome, Philip. Thanks for being appreciative. It means a lot. Make a video on finding your calling. I already have several videos on finding your calling. Just search them on the channel. Have I ever seen the dead rays? Not personally witnessed it. I've prayed for one dead person and I've only got a chance to see one dead person prayed for, which is the person I prayed for. And um, I thought they were coming back to life. I felt like they were warm and they were moving. And then after about five minutes, we got kicked out and the Catholic priest came in and put coins over their eye and smoked them with a smoke machine. So if they were getting raised from the dead, uh, it was, yeah, that was that. They basically said, you guys can pray for five minutes as long as the Catholic priest could come in and put coins on their eyes and smoke them down after you guys pray, and that's what happened. So it was, it was a bit frustrating. It was, it was a friend of mine's uncle. But I could have swore he was coming back to life, y'all. I felt warm. I felt, I was like, he's coming back to life. But yeah, that was that. You're a good soul. Thank you. We have baby pictures. My dad's in the chat saying we have baby pictures. I do have a lot of baby pictures, that's for sure. The audio though, what's going on with the audio, Christopher? Guys, tell me what is going on with the audio. Hold on, let me put on headphones. Let me put on headphones and see what you guys are talking about. Let's see, device. Testing, all right, hold on. Type one if the audio is fine. Maybe it's just him. Audio is fine, okay. It's just my brother here. It's just my brother. Hold on, guys. Let me just double check one thing here. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with me. Everything's going to be fine. Oops, that's the wrong button. Okay, so the audio is good. Bring back John Ramirez. I will soon. I will soon. I will bring back on John Ramirez very soon. It was glitching. Why? It was glitching earlier, but it's fine for me. Yeah, it's on my end, guys. It's smooth, so I don't know. The audio is good. Okay, maybe just refresh if you're having audio issues. Let me just see one thing. Check, check. Yeah, if you're having audio issues, maybe just refresh. Steven Bancars. I had a three hour, three and a half hour call with Steven Bancars. I haven't told you guys about yet. Um, the other day, uh, maybe a week ago. Awesome, awesome call. Awesome guy. And he will be coming on. Um, he will be coming on. So did my audio just go out? Check one, two. Hold on, guys. Check one, two. Can you guys still hear me? What is going on here? Check, check, check. Check one, two. Can you hear me? Okay. So yes, he will be coming on soon. Stay tuned. Bank on soon. So excited. I'm glad you're excited. Audio is okay. I'm audio is. Yes, I'm trolling you guys. I'm you guys right now. It's just my voice changer. Don't stress. Audio is fine. I know, I was trolling you guys with the audio. I, I just, my thing popped up. Now my audio's going out. I know, I know, I'm trolling you guys. 
We already did the audio thing and then my my voice changer popped up. So you're good. Don't worry. Hearing static, check the soundboard. Yeah, I'm on the soundboard. Thank you. Does your soul only have one chance to live on earth? What if you die before you hear Jesus? Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter one that God makes himself known even through creation so that nobody has an excuse. So no one is without excuse. Only a fool says in his heart, there is no God. Now I have to play the troll voice. Got you. The baby voice. You want me to play the baby voice? Home Alone, Kevin vibes. Oh, like trolling everybody or what? That would be like, hold on. I gotta set some of this stuff up. Let's see. The main, wait, where is it at? The main troll one is, is that one. Cause then everyone's like, looks at the door, right? The Static was on the soundboard, yes. But earlier somebody was saying it was cutting out. So. Do you have anything on Hawaiian culture? I don't. I don't. Do the cop voice setting. Uh, this one. Ladies and gentlemen, I need all the religious people to leave the chat immediately. I'm just kidding. Audio is awful. I know. I was messing with the thing. I was doing it on purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit like. Everybody like the video. If you're still watching, like the video. Okay, that one's obnoxious because it's very staticky. Disney. The Discord link? I got you. It is discord.gg slash Isaiah Saldivar and it's in the comments pinned. Man, I'm losing my voice. Hold on. I had to sniffle and I wanted to do it on the mic. Isaiah's living his pre Christian dream of the cop voice, right? Please don't arrest me. Do you think video games are demonic? I've said it before. It's the same thing I think about movies. It depends on what you're watching or playing. Video games are an interactive movie in my opinion. So I got to do another show with TJ. I know, I know. How much is his monthly partner? There's no limit. You can do 50 cents a month. You can do a thousand a month. It doesn't matter. There's no limit. Cop voice is fire. It's just a little staticky. We are not doing any fart effects. So those are officially retired. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about it. Do a topic on the Nephilim. I have a video on the Nephilim already. Oops. Oops. Sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I have a video on the Nephilim. Wait, is that going to keep going off? Stop doing that. Oops. Oops. There we go. Sorry, guys. I was messing with my thing here. Come out with your Bible up. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Disney. Oh yeah, everyone's going crazy about Disney. I will probably make a video this weekend on it. I just want to wait till the dust settles because I don't want to just be jumping on it for the trend. Listen, I've been blowing the trumpet on Disney for a long time. You guys already know. I get all, everyone gets all mad when I talk about Disney. People will follow me. People write me. Uh, it, people go crazy when I talk about Disney. But Disney is exposing itself right now. So everyone calls me crazy when I talk bad about Disney, but right now they are exposing themselves. If you've seen the latest debacle at Disney, Stephanie Patterson said, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you always for preaching repentance. The Holy Spirit revealed to me when it was war between Russia and Ukraine started that this was a major contraction in the birth pains. Yes, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Marie Moreno. Thank you. Chad Marks said, God has given you a true gift in growing God's kingdom in a way that motivates uh, as much as teaches. God bless you. Thank you, Chad. Um, to Tamadi Kari, so how are you doing? Blessings all the way from Australia. My name is uh, Tamadi or T. I just asked for prayer. I got your prayer request there. Thank you so much. I got you, T. Thank you, Uriah. Thank you. Say God bless. I'm praying. Um, for now, I love and I'll keep in prayers, brother. Thank you, Uriah. I appreciate you. Yes, Disney is exposing itself. If you guys haven't watched the recent um, directors of Disney, like basically saying that they want half of their characters to be um, like transgender and stuff soon. And it's just all this stuff going on. They, they have an agenda. They've always had an agenda. But now they're exposing themselves. And that's that's cool. Literally, they are. Just type in Disney 
Disney exposed or any recent video on Disney and you'll see like the directors and the lead artists and those that are directing the movies and choosing what movies go where are uh, huge, huge, huge promoters of the transgender LGBTQ agenda and getting our kids in it and all that stuff. Can I message you on Discord? Yes, but right now I have 174 messages on Discord that I'm working through. Guys, remember I'm one person. I have like five social media platforms that get messages, a total several hundred per day on all my platforms and I try to get through them. I can't guys, I can't, I'm one person. Um, so just bear with me. I can't talk to, you know, thousands of people. We're get, We're reaching like several million people a week. And so to try to get to everybody that's messaging, I just, I'm one person, so be patient with me. But I will try to, I'm gonna go through all these Discord messages. I'm gonna sit down and work my way through them. But I had like over 300 the first day I launched Discord, so. And then here's the crazy part. If I message you guys back and say this, then you message me back, it's a new message. So say I go through 300 messages and I respond to all of them. And then the next day I get hundred new messages, that's 400. And then you all 300 respond back. Now I have 400 new messages the next day. So that's what I'm saying. It's a lot guys. Thank you. So I'm trying. And the, the thing of hiring someone to go through my messages is just weird. Like, why would I do that? Then what's the point of messaging me, right? If I'm just gonna hire someone to go through them. Thank you, Tracy. So we love you and understand. Will the Hellcat car give you a demon? No, it won't. I saw a popular Christian, Christian family promoting turning red. That's weird. How do you not get overwhelmed? Uh, prayer and not being online 24 seven, disconnecting from being online and not feeling the pressure of having to respond to everybody. I used to be overwhelmed and then I realized, oh wait, I'm one person, I don't have to respond to everybody. I messaged and you didn't respond. Yeah, that's the story of a lot of people. Again, I'm one person. What's the background? It's just copyright free, I forget the name. Oh wow, it's really loud. Oh no, it's not that loud actually, Never mind. What do you think of the seven ministry? I don't know what that is. Glitching again? Oh, that's lame. Refresh. I'm reading the chat. I will have videos coming out soon about Jehovah Witness, Mormons, um, and all that. Okay, I know a lot of you keep asking, hey, I love the video on our Catholics, Christians, and I want to do other videos as well. By the way, Isaiah, Sen um, Sen Senegal, is that how you say it? Senegal, I don't know how to say it. Is a French speaking country in the west of coast of Africa and it's 2.40 a.m. Rachel, thank you. Rachel's watching at 2.40 a.m. right now in West Africa. Did you say West Africa? In the west coast of Africa, that's incredible. Thank you. Conspiracy theory video, what does that mean? Oh, conspiracy theories, I don't, yeah. Stay away from conspiracy theories. Wednesday, 1 p.m., Remnant Radio. Tomorrow, 6 p.m., Revival Lifestyle Podcast, Exposing the New Age Part 2. We're going to be talking about astrology, the Enneagram, manifesting, karma, all that stuff, okay? We'll explain as much as we can. You will, we'll answer questions. We'll do a Q&A, too. We'll, we'll do a Q&A with Everett, okay? Tomorrow, don't let me forget, live Q&A with Everett at the end of the broadcast. We'll take questions about the New Age. Um, we'll try to save some time for that, okay? When are you coming to New Jersey? In August. I will be in New Jersey in August. I will be in New Jersey. Uh, I gotta look at my calendar here. August, I think 26th or 27th. But I'll post it when I get the date and all that. Mm -mm. James Thompson, thank you. My lip is not happy right now. Yes, I still have a voice changer. Where are you from? Central California. I'm from Central California. Stockton, Modesto, Tracy, Manteca, that area. How do you get on the Discord chat? Just join the Discord. The link's in the comments. Just join it, and then you can just jump in general chat. Which is, hold on, let me go to it. Right here. This is the chat rooms. All the different ones, voice chats. There's people in the deliverance chats right here. And then all these rooms you can go to, just click them on the side. And then the general chat and all that good stuff. Okay. Police voice again. There you go. Christopher Demmer. 
I got you, bro. Live stream camera. It is a Sony A7S III with a 24 millimeter 1.4 G Master Sony lens. When are you coming to Florida? July, I'll be in Orlando with Daniel Adams. Do your siblings sing or play instruments? Yes. My sisters play instruments. My brother plays like every instrument and I play drums. Tamadi, thank you. So bless you again, Isaiah. Thank you for your teachings and piercing to the heart. Praise God for using you, man of God. Thank you, Tamadi. Thank you, T. I appreciate you. Does your wife have her own channel? She doesn't, but she has her own social media on Instagram. You can go find her. Go to my page, find a picture of us, and you'll see the tag. Her name is Alyssa Saldivar. Yes, I play drums. I can't get to it. Uh, why not, Anita? Anita, go to discord.gg slash Isaiah Saldivar. I'll type it again in the chat, okay? If you can't get to it, go to discord.gg slash Isaiah Saldivar. There you go. Do you believe in the rapture? Yes. When you come to San Diego, I don't know. I'll be in San Bernardino in June. About the wife, does my wife stream? She doesn't stream. She goes, she's in our partner's calls usually, and she'll be on stream soon. But she has a Instagram page, Facebook, all that. Alyssa Saldivar. So yes, I'm not one of those preachers that has like a wife in secret that doesn't post about her or anything like that. Uh, my wife's real. So you can go check out her social media if you'd like to see more of our family and whatnot. Are you using a MacBook? No, I'm using a custom-built PC. Yes, sir. Will you ever visit Fresno? Possibly. I've preached there several times before. Yes, my wife is with our kids, guys. We have four children. Oops. Is that the right voice? We have... <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. We have four children. Not one, not two, not three. Four of them. So, um, when I'm in here, she's with the kids. Keeping them alive, you know what I mean? Let me change, let's see. Hmm. That is way too bright. We're not doing that. Oh no, it froze, my lights. My lights froze. We're gonna do this one. This one's called Electric Chill. Can't type on Discord chat, I don't know why. I don't know why you can't type, just type in, go to the general chat, you should be able to type. We have right now, for those of you asking, 3,292 people on Discord, almost 3,300. Discord is like an online community hub where you can chat, voice chat, video chat. There's chat rooms. It's just an online community. So yeah, it's really, really cool. Oh, one of my lights is still stuck on green. That's interesting. Not sure why. It's, it's not, what is going on here? There we go. Okay, now they're all synced up. I was having issues there. Is there anything on YouTube of you playing drums? Um, <laughs> I think there's one video of my really, really old Screamo band that I won't give you the link to, but no, other than that, no. How do you control how your children use the internet? I monitor them. We don't give them any internet access. Um, if they have an iPad, it's on a show that we know of or like a kid's show. We don't let them like browse the internet on their iPads or anything like that. Can you bring on your cat? No, sorry. How soon do you think the rapture is? Any moment. <laughs> Honestly, I think any time. Favorite song you've been listening to? I'll show you the CD I've been listening to. It is by Jordan May. Shout out to Jordan May. And it is, that's not it. What is that? Okay, hold on. Where is the CD? The CD is called No Pressure and it's by Jordan May. Let me make sure I'm not leaking anything here. But that is... That's the song. That's the album I've been li listening to. On repeat, no pressure. Go check it out. Jordan May. Um, if you want to do a collab, Jacob, go fill out a booking form on my website. That's the best way to do it. But I'm not doing a lot of stuff right now. Just saying, so don't take it personal. Yeah, my wife is real. Some preachers that are online, I'm like, are they even married? They say they have a wife, but there's no pictures of them, no family, no nothing. Like, I'm just, I don't know. I think it's good to show you have a family and stuff like that as well. 
Young people might not know what a CD is, right? Why is it not letting people chat? Um, what does it say when you try to chat? Can I get one of the Discord mods to check into this? They are saying, a bunch of people are saying they can't chat. All right, all of you, Richard Miller, I need to talk to you guys. Whoever's saying that's not working when you try to chat on Discord, what is it saying to you? Because we may have a setting wrong or something. Maybe I can get one of the mods to um, message me or to confirm this. What's going on here? Will you do another reading worship lyrics? Yeah, I will. Yeah, the teaching's over. You can rewind it. We're at the very end right now. You have to create an account. Oh, you need to verify your email. Yeah, if you join the Discord, you need to create a Discord and you need to verify your email. And the reason why we did that is because um, we don't want bot accounts coming in and spamming our channel and overwhelming it and stuff. So yes, you need to make a Discord account and verify your email. That's a precaution we had to put in because people are coming in and spamming the Discord and making bots and causing mischief. And you know, there's people that are Satanists and atheists that come in and want to cause mischief. Yes, I'm going to be in New Jersey. It'll be good. We'll go buck wild. Yes. We ever visit Wisconsin for sure. I've been to Wisconsin several times and I have a good church out there. I love that. I'll be going back to, I'm sure. Is it normal for a toddler to be stubborn? Yes, it is normal. Yeah, um, someone let me know what it's saying on Discord. If it's saying you need an account, please make an account, verify your email so you can chat. I have a video on the Enneagram, but we'll talk about it tomorrow night too. <laughs> Podcast with your mom, dad, and siblings. That would be cool. Should Christians practice Lent? No, Lent is um, a Catholic thing. Do you preach on the streets? Uh, right now I preach online and I preach in churches. I do not street preach as of right now. But those that feel that's their calling to do, praise the Lord. Just like some are not called to preach online, some are not called to travel to churches, some are called to do youth, some are called, everyone has a different part of the body, different calling. But for me, I'm most effective online with reaching the people we reach and then uh, preaching in churches as well. But I have preached outdoors. I've preached at parks before. If you're asking if I ever have, yes, I have. I just don't currently street preach. Lent is also a Lutheran. Okay, well, yeah, Lutheran, Methodist. I'm none of those. I'm not, I'm non-denominational, so we don't do Lent. And not the nominal Christian denominations, like for instance, one of the biggest ones, the Assemblies of God, don't do Lent. So I'm talking about like mainstream or non-denominational, but I'm not talking about like Lutherans or um methodist or anything like that because i don't know the lutheran methodist i don't know their doctrine so i wouldn't be able to tell you but i don't personally do lent or or um tell people to do lent please make a video on mr to lgbtq community okay i will love your teaching thank you eric evangelizing is amazing yes it is any luck on getting Dr. Michael Brown? I haven't reached out, but I will reach out soon. I think it would be good. And uh, yeah, we're going to do that soon. We're going to reach out to him soon. We have we have a lot of mutual friends. I've met him before. I've done events with him. So I, I think he'll come on. Take them AirPods out. Uh, I'm using the AirPods to hear the voice thing. Why? You don't like AirPods? Are AirPods the devil? My teen son's going to like Jordan May. Yes, Jordan May is amazing. Him and Gabby Call would have really good stuff together. Anti-Illuminati, tell me the conspiracy behind the AirPods. Oh, they're not good for you? Oh, sorry. Why are there so many different doctrines and theologies? I wish I knew the answer to that. Do you have any of your church preaching available? Yes, go to my channel and go to my preaching playlist. I have tons of videos of me preaching at my church. Would you consider a dreams tab on the Discord? Sure. If the mods want to add it, they can add it. I don't mind. Is Jezebel sometimes stubborn spirit to cast out? Yes. Guys, tomorrow night, six o'clock. 
we will be live exposing the new age part two and then wednesday we'll be with remnant radio at 1 p.m pacific time i hope to see you there we'll be live also friday we will be going to arizona saturday we'll be preaching sunday morning arizona then we'll be live again monday and tuesday back at it i love you guys i appreciate you guys you guys are amazing mom love you tell the girls i said hi my mom's watching three of my four girls right now tell the girls i said hi mom and i love them hi justice journey and harvest love and miss you guys um you guys are awesome love you all you guys are amazing check my schedule i updated it today so go to my website isaiasaldo.com slash schedule check the schedule check the deliverance map all that good stuff i love you guys i will see you guys tomorrow night at six o'clock god bless goodbye good night guys love you guys god bless you good night go to sleep love you guys have a good night see you guys in discord bye good night thanks for being here i love you all so much i don't take you for granted appreciate you guys everyone's saying hi zez mom lomita love you guys the kalagua Kalagua family support and love you. Thank you, AJ Mike. The Alvin outro, yeah. You know it. Alright guys, have a good night. Bye. Check my website.